Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to Phase 1, the show where we look at pre-release content. Today we're having a look at Little Witch in the Woods. Okay, look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I've done about several different takes, and every time, like, I've either forgotten to hit record, or I've started so much that I've had to scrap the video. This is a hard game to describe, and this is a hard game, even though it shouldn't be, to record, because I keep making all these mistakes. So, I'll just get right into the gameplay and the aesthetic, and you can just make your own assumptions. This is a crafting adventure game, starring a little cute, adorable witch, and some adorable pixel art. It's actually pretty well put together for what it is, at least aesthetically. In terms of gameplay, it's fine. It's a relaxing, neat little game, but... It, it doesn't have a lot of depth to it, even though I think it's still fun enough. Basically, you're a... witch apprentice, and you're out here by yourself, you were on a train to actually learn with a bunch of other witches and, you know, be a, a real apprentice, but you decided to take a little detour and through a various set of circumstances, you can't really go back right now. So now you're gonna just go throughout this little area, the secluded forest next to this village. You're gonna go to the village, you're gonna go help everyone out. You're gonna restore the village to working order and have a little adventure, a little mystery too. It's fun. It's fine. In fact, I'd say the story elements of this game are the best part. The dialogue in this game is superb. I wish I could show you that a little bit more. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to do that, like, because I haven't been recording this game the entire time I've been playing it, so a lot of the good dialogue moments have passed us already. I'll just kind of summarize it. You're playing as sort of a bratty, spoiled uh, little girl character. She's not self-centered, though. Like, she's out to do the right thing. And that kind of makes for some interesting dialogue, where you have this hat that constantly calls her out on her, uh... ...less than, uh, moral behavior. Again, not like a evil character, just like a kind of a bratty character. Uh, a little lazy, too. But what makes the character dynamics interesting is that you got the hat that's kind of like the responsible one, and then you have the girl who's the irresponsible one, but she's the one calling the shots. So, there's a lot of back-and-forth dialogue that makes it interesting. And it helps that the characters are actually drawn fairly well. I mean, the portraits look great. Let's see if we can fast forward time. There we go, okay. I want to get to the morning. This game does have a day-night cycle, which is interesting. You have encyclopedias that you can fill out for various items that you're crafting and collecting. So you can get a good idea of, okay, when does this thing come out? Is it at night or the daytime? What time specifically? NPC patterns. You can, like, dictate stuff with this little pen I have at the bottom here, in addition to picking up items. You also got NPCs. This one in particular is not part of the town, she just kind of has quests for you to do. You can make a delivery. This requires, I believe, making two potions, cursed candies. We'll actually do this. It's a cursed lifting candy. You'll get Luna Coins for this. Luna Coins are used for, like, the Witch Currency, then you have, like, a standard Gold Currency, which is used at the shop at the town. The town is pretty much abandoned because of all these, like, vines that have sprouted up and grown everywhere. I was actually trying to harvest those guys, but I forgot I have a full inventory. So the town's all messed up. Basically, you gotta restore it. There's a whole mystery going on right now. You found, like, this abandoned Witch's Hut, so you're taking over as, like, the Apprentice Witch. You're helping people out in the town, and there's this whole mystery, you know, why are these vines destroying the town? You know, where do they come from? Why do they drive all the villagers out? It, it, there's there's a lot of little things going on here and there that make for an intriguing story. The problem is, is that the gameplay right now doesn't really achieve the greatness that the story and the dialogue are currently. Okay, where was that witch candy? I really like the details, by the way, on these, um, on, on this book right here that you have. It's like all like faded out, but you can still see like what certain stuff is because you're you're a witch like from the school You kind of know some stuff already, but you could, don't remember some things In fact, one of the jokes in this game is that like okay You just went to witch school yet You can't remember a single thing like how to read read the witch language You had to get someone else to read it for you It was kind of amusing because the hat would uh, call you out on that, you know your character All right curse lifting candy Squ Squishy chub fur extract and maple herb extract. Well, that's great. We already have some, but we're gonna find some extra anyway. Okay. So you have a small inventory you can have expanded, as it would imply right here with those little locked icons. So that's nice. The game is planned to be released in 2023, I believe. There's about five hours of content currently. 
according to the developer. I'm about three hours in right now, so we're taking some of that flour that we got earlier and we're turning it into extract. I don't think we need the witch flower for this, so we're going to actually put that in away. We have the fur, that's good. And we also have some maple herb extract from earlier. You're going to have to do this one at a time, I believe you can upgrade this thing to actually do like multiple batches at once. Now, as for the story progression, basically it's what you'd expect for a crafting game. Actually, let's look at our books so I can show you one of the, the crafting system because it is, is, is alright. So you put two furs in the extractor and get the juice. We did that. Two maple herbs in the extractor. We did that a while ago, so we did that. So, next steps. Set fire to stage three. And then for stirring the ladle, we do not want to do that. It says don't stir. And then pour in the right vessel. The vessel part, I'm not sure about yet. But that's probably coming later. So here's your fire stage right here. So we're going to do stage four. And then at the bottom, we don't want to stir, so we're going to do that. Alright, and then we're going to make a potion. Let's do that. Or a candy, I guess. Wait, did I do that all wrong wrong already? What, what the hell? You actually don't lose anything if you screw it up, so... Maple herb extract. Maple herb extract. Stage three. Whoops. I, I was thinking of another potion. And we just... Okay, I jumped the gun there. That's fine. It, there's, again, there's no consequence for screwing this up, so I'm not really, like, paying attention. There we go. I imagine that there's some limited-use, like, story items, and that's why they can't do it yet. Although, it would be nice if there was some kind of consequence. So, I have to do this by tomorrow, but if I have all this stuff, like, hiding around, you know, I don't have to worry about... Stressing for time. In fact, some things like they need a time to grow anyway So you're better off actually just doing everything ahead of time and just having a stockpile of stuff So it does add a little bit of busy work to the game, which is the nature of the genre, but the depth there is just not Available like you're not having some crazy Lab factory like in some other games and you're not having like the fun interesting problem solving is something like Witchwood Witchwood is a game I previously covered that was a great game because it had a lot of really fun problem solving, but in this game, everything is so linear that it's really hard for the game to really shine with its crafting system and, and its, you know, aesthetic. Basically, in this game, the, the main issue is that you, you're going along like, okay, I need to do this thing. Well, how do I do that thing? Well, you have to talk to everyone in town and like show them like a piece of paper or like the next thing in the game triggers. Like something will appear or an NPC will appear and then you talk to them. And then that's how you progress. Whereas in Witchwood, you, you're kind of just wandering around and everything's there already. You just need to put all the pieces together. Whereas this game, you're just solving a internal game checklist of criteria in the code. And then that unlocks a particular thing that, you know, will let you progress. It's not as organic or as interesting as something like, again, Witchwood. And this game doesn't have a lot of anything else going for it. There's no combat system, so if you're expecting, you know, some... I don't know, RPG combat with crafting, and you're better off playing something like Atelier Riser. And if you want something with, like, crazy, like, management systems and, like, uh, just all kind, of, you, can, you can play games like Satisfactory or Factorio. This game doesn't follow any route in particular. It just kind of sits in the middle, and it doesn't do anything particularly interesting. It's still fun. It's still fine. But there's nothing about this game that's really, like, it stands out. And... It doesn't need to, in my opinion, because it's still fun enough to kind of just relax and listen to the music and play. And the, the story is really where it's at. That's what, that's what your progression is. Like every other one of these games, okay, there's a satisfaction and then there's progression. There's a progression in building more items and crafting more items and like getting like the new crafting system and then trying out those new items. The progression for this game is the story. You know. That's, that's what makes it interesting. And, and, you know, the dialogue. The goal is the character development and seeing where everything's going. Solving a little mystery that's going on here. But there's no detective work, right? There's no interesting thing that's, like, inherent to the gameplay. It's all narrative-driven. And that's okay. If you want something that's a fun, little, cute, interesting, narrative-driven story, this game's pretty good. If you're looking for something a little bit deep on the gameplay side, you're not getting that. You're trading gameplay for story here. And the gameplay, once again... 
is fine. There, there's a difference between a game that's, like, not very good, and there's a game that's passable, and it's got something else that you can strive to. Like, there are games where they just have passable gameplay and nothing else, and it's just... It's just bad, because you have no motivation to keep playing. My motivation is, I want to see where the story's going. I want to see if this girl's going to get back to her little witch college. I want to see what's going to happen to this town. I want to see what's going to happen when I populate it with, you know, people. It's potentially really interesting. But the gameplay just doesn't service that very well. And that's a shame. Because I like the humor, I like the dialogue, which, unfortunately, I haven't been able to show you a whole lot of because of, you know, what I've mentioned earlier. It's a little bit... Complicated because I haven't been recording this the whole time and it's only at certain points because it's a story-driven game. Okay, we can upgrade our work tools through Diane. So we gotta make a potion to enhance our intellect because we can't remember how to make a potion and read which. And then we have to get rid of the pick uh, the prickly vines with that potion. So again, it's like this progression sense, which is fine, but it's usually either revolves around just grinding or filling out a checklist, an internal checklist of just talking to people. I would like to see if the game goes for a more hands-off approach. Like, it's like, hey, you know, you need to craft this potion. I don't know how you do that. Why don't you uh, walk around and figure it out? And it's like, okay. Or like, hmm, I need something that'll destroy these vines. And then you talk to people in town, and the game does that. It's like, okay, you're gonna talk to people in town, they give you all these clues, and like, oh, that's great. Maybe if I look at it, and I, I can kind of come up with my own potion to figure it out, or how to deal with that, or if I if I come up with my own discovery. But the game's like, no, 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 actually, um, uh, the characters actually figured it out for you. You just need to make this potion now. Like, oh, I, I'm just given a set of instructions. I'm not doing things on my own, really. It's like, really, the game's solving all this for me. Which is a shame. Because I feel like there's a lot of potential here to make something, like, kind of engaging and interesting in the gameplay. And the game just doesn't really have that. It's, again, it's a nice little chill experience. And I'm going to recommend the game. I am going to recommend it. But if you're looking for something like this but better in terms of gameplay and also gorgeous art style, you want to play Witchwood. If you're looking for some of that crafting elements not too deep, like Factorio maybe... It's a bit of an unfair comparison to compare it to Factorio, but they are almost the same price. I think one is 30, one, this one's 20, and this is going to be a little bit more expensive when it releases. But if you're looking for, like, you know, something like along the lines of crafting, but with a combat system to keep you engaged, I tell you Ryza, although Ryza's story is kind of a slow boil. Like, I was like six hours into that game, and there was barely any story. And uh, it's a problem, like, even longer into the game. And if you want those crazy like, systems, but maybe you want something not as insane as Vactorio, but maybe a little bit more cutesy, uh, Slime Ranch is a really good one. I do like this one a lot. This is one of the few crafting games that I can actually tolerate because there's a good story behind it and something to actually progress towards. Whereas some of these other crafting games, they just feel like a giant time sink for nothing. It's just like, my progression is wasting my, my entire day doing the same task over and over again. It's fun, it's addictive, but it's like the... It's like this really bad feeling where I feel like I've totally wasted my entire day after playing it and I don't want to play it again. Even though I enjoyed it for like the weird dopamines hits I get. Yeah. I really don't have much else to say. I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to talk about this one. Hopefully I've showcased enough of it. I, I do suggest, as always, check out other reviews and, like, talks about it. I, again, this is not really a review, though. This is more of a first impressions on a unfinished product. So it might get better over time. They might be thinking, like, oh, hey, I, I understand exactly what this uh, crazy guy who's balding is saying. Uh, you, we, we actually are going to put a lot of stuff to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I'm going to say check it out anyway. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out.